Now, I'm, I haven't shared this publicly, but I'm going to state it now. And as I do, I want to be careful because I'm not trying to say anything bad about anyone that has passed. But um, the Lord told me before all this started, he said, a culling is coming. And I said, what? He said, a culling. And I said, what is that? And I looked at the word cull, and it means to go through a herd and slaughter the weak. Yeah, and that's what we've been seeing, and that's scriptural. It says that when the Israelites went through the desert, that the Amalekites came, and, and they always came up and slaughtered the stragglers that couldn't keep up with the rest of the tribes, the ones that fell behind. And that's not a dissing anybody that has, I've had friends pass. Oh, like, just like that, I was like, wow, what happened? You know, um, but if... It's important that we have these revelations because the enemy is going after anyone that has an open door, a weakness in their soul, in their body. He's going after you. We must become strong in the Lord. Amen? Because a culling is happening right now. Just in the last month, I've seven people that I know have died. Just like that. Okay. So death is one of the ruling powers right now. And we see not just death of physical bodies, COVID, other diseases, disorders, all kinds of crazy things happening. But we're also seeing death of marriages, death of finances, death of dreams, death of businesses closing down during you know COVID, never opening up again, never recovering, death of minutes, death of churches. You know, we've seen a lot of death. Death of friendships and relationships, a lot of friendships have been extremely challenged. And honestly, um, anytime I have a challenge with someone, I tell them, I'm not letting you go until we're healed. And then once we're healed, if you still want to go, then go. But I'm not letting you make a decision to go while you're wounded. People are making bad decisions because they're wounded and hurt. Okay? And it's ruining people's lives. And, and relationships. Okay, so we're going to talk about the spirit of death tonight. All right, <clears throat> and as we do, I want to tell you something. There should be absolutely, absolutely, no reason for us to say to see any of the effects of death. Kevin, please put up Hebrews two fourteen on on the on the board. And I'll read it while he's doing that. Okay. It says, Since therefore he, his children, share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature that by going through death, no, he might bring to naught and make of no effect the one who had the power of death, that is the devil. So Jesus, through his death on the cross, Bought, brought the power of death to what? To not and to no effect. How powerful do we believe the cross of Jesus Christ is? Because we have way undervalued its authority. Way, way undervalued its authority. Okay? Jesus brought the power of death to what? Not and to no effect. What does that mean? You should not have any effect of death in your life. You should not be seeing any effects of death on your organs, on your bones, on your joints, on your discs, on your spine, on your neck, on your lymphatic system, respiratory system, circulatory system, digestive system. Reproductive system, you should not, you should not be seeing any effect of death on your finances, on your marriage, on your children, on your household, on your church, on your ministry. Because Jesus took a beating. He was whipped. He was beaten. He was pierced through. He was mocked. He was spit on. He was hung on a cross naked. So that you and me and all of us 
would not see any effect, any effect, any effect. What does it say? It says any effect of death. He has stripped the power of death already. It's already done. We're putting up with it. Everyone needs to rise up. Everyone needs to rise up. And any time you see any sign of death, aging, wrinkles, whatever, menopause, whatever it is, take that one scripture and stand up to the devil and say, I don't have to see any effect. Of you, devil, on my body in this way. I come against it. I fight it. I decree this scripture. I believe this scripture. I will war with the prophetic. I will fight with the word of God. And I will cast down this, this demonic assault because it's already been defeated on my behalf with Jesus on the cross. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1.10, Kevin. I'll start reading it. It is that purpose and grace which he has now made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who annulled death, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, I gave you the wrong version, but that's okay. In the Amplified, it says, who annulled death and made it of no effect and brought us life and immortality don't you understand that that jesus has annulled death he's abolished death he's destroyed death he's annihilated death he's removed death Amen. it's been um, demolished destroyed eradicated 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 don't you know that, that Psalm 8 says that God has made us a little bit lower, slightly lower than the gods and the heavenly beings. And we, we have been given dominion over all, all the works of his hands. All, all the works of his hands. That's your body. That's your money. That's your ministry. That's your church. That's, that's every, everything you look at was created by God. Even these lights and everything else, God gave man the ability to make those lights. We have dominion, and we're not taking it, and we are not coming against death, and it's already been abolished. It's already been annulled. It's already been destroyed. It's already been eradicated, and we should not see any effect of death. We've got to stand up together. It can't just be Katie Souza walking around with her combats on, kicking the devil in the teeth. We all have to join in because one lays down a thousand, two lays down ten thousand. We've got to rise up. And what we have to do is enforce what has already happened. What has already been decreed and already taken place. Now we must enforce it. Stop putting up with death. Stop agreeing with death. Man, we agree with death. Oh, you know, I'm just getting old. <laughs> oh, we do. A, oh, yeah. No, I'm so done with this world. I just want to go be with the Lord. We agree with death. You know what happens when you agree with death? He's going to come get you. He's going to come get you because you just give him permission. Snap out of it. Just saying, not trying to be mean, but snap out of it. Do you understand? Look, I'm speaking from personal experience. I have had death come and personally visit me to take me out. Four years ago, I'm really sick. My dog is sick. My dog had been seizing like every few minutes for almost 24 plus hours straight. I'm sitting there praying for him, laying in my bed, praying, come on, God, help us out. And all of a sudden, this dark specter literally walks in my room and says my name out loud like a creepy movie, Katie, like some creepy movie from Hollywood. And I looked up and I said, who's that guy? And he goes, it's the spirit of death. And he's on assignment to kill you both. And for some reason, I started like doing this. Because this scripture bubbled up inside me. The last enemy to be put under my feet is death. Now, now I want to explain something to you about that. P 
people go, oh, yeah, the last enemy to be put on our feet is death. When we die and go to heaven, we'll have defeated death. Excuse me? That doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, when we die <laughs> and then go to heaven, that's when we defeat death and put him under our feet? Excuse me? You had to die to get there? That's death. Hello, that's death. That's death having an effect on you. When Jesus already brought his effect to naught and to no effect. So I, I got cocky. I did my little dance, right? I thought, oh, yeah, I got this, right? Ooh, boom, boom. Holmes came at me hard. Every part of my life he touched. Every part. First he went after my body. Within like a week, I went into menopause. Boom. That's death, ladies. You know what? We're not supposed to age. We were created immortal. We lost our immortality in the garden through sin, and that's when we began to what? Die. But that's how, that wasn't the original creation. That's how, how we were originally meant to be. So he went after my body, and I went into menopause. Oh, my God. Okay, like, I had already defeated the sweaty Bettys, right? Like, years before, I was having the sweaty Bettys. Like, every night, you know, the blanket, like, sweaty. The blanket goes off, and then you're freezing cold. The blanket goes on, and then you sweat. Ah, the blanket goes off, and then the blanket goes on, right? You get up, and the whole bed is sopping wet, right? Then you're coming in with, a be with one of your pool towels, the big beach pool towels, and laying it down to sop up the water because you, you don't want to wake the hubby up to change the sheets in the middle of the night. So you're, now you're laying on a beach towel. It smells like chlorine from your pool, right? So I had gotten delivered of those. God had told me, I want you to preach a certain message on a certain night and uh, do, just do it privately, and I did it, and boom, that night, I, I, woke, I, I was like, I went home, boom, I knew I was getting delivered. I woke up, I never had a sweaty bitty again. So I'm thinking, oh, I got this menopause thing. We have this woof, baby. I got it going on, right? And, oh, no. From that, after the death visit, I started having hot flashes. Well, I learned that hot flashes and sweaty betties are totally different animal. Okay, hot flashes are like a nuclear bomb goes off inside of you and the hellfire eats your face. <laughs> That's what I was, and I was getting like 20 of those a day. Hardcore. Hardcore, right? And so, and now, I'm a cook. The papa, I love to spoil my papa, right? And so, I, I'll have all the burners going, standing in front of the fire, just going at it. And now I'm having the hot flashes. Now, we live in Arizona, and the papa is a, a, is a tightwad. He's a cheapskate. So, he likes to have the AC on like 80 degrees in Arizona. So, there I am, chefing away for the pops, and like a, a flash would hit. All the burners are going. It's 80 degrees in the house. And I'm like, oh, baby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You think you can, ooh, you know, nudge down the, you know, air a little bit, cool it off a little bit. It goes, it's that 80, babe. It's fine. I'm like, oh, yeah, but I, I'm having a flash, hon. I'm having a hot flash. She goes, you'll get over it. I was like, yeah, oh, but it's getting really hot. He goes, it's fine, Kate. It'll pass. I said, do you want dinner or not? And he goes, yeah, and I go, then turn down the AC before I rip off your head and eat it. <laughs> the papa. Yeah, and everything started to go sideways. I mean, I was having the hot flashes. I was getting, my, my, my hair was, was becoming this dry, frizzy, like, like I had a ball of frizz this big on the side and a littler ball on this side, like matching, kind of like co-matching balls. And I would come home from tour, right, and, and I would do every single concoction I could come up with. I would get the mayonnaise out, the avocado out, the olive oil out, the coconut oil out, every other conditioner. <laughs> mixing up this big thing and slather, right, and then like stack all the hair. I had really long hair. But stack it all up on top of my head and then go into the pantry and take out the saran wrap <laughs> and wrap it. Around my head. I'll be walking around the house looking like a cone head. No makeup on. My, my face, my skin's all baggy, saggy, now getting all dry. Got some green mask on my face with a cone head thing. And the papa be looking at me. 
finally said to me one day, he says, you know what, baby? I only get to see Jeannie in the bottle, not out. It was a mess. It was a mess. Then the papa, he went too far one night. He said, he said, it's okay, baby. It's all right that you're getting a little older. He said, he said, because see, I have a dream. I have a dream that there we are, you and I, gray hair, you know, all rickety looking, holding hands, hobbling down the beach into the sunset. And I looked at him, I said, get behind me, Satan. You can hobble down the beach all you want, but I'm gonna run down the beach in a hot pink bikini. My hair braided like Bo Derek. He since changed his mind. It was tough. And it wasn't just, it, that's just where it started. Then that devil, he went after my ministry, killed off all my contractors, took out four of my top employees, literally killed four of my very close friends, including the unborn child of one of my intercessors. Okay. Hit our finances, donors falling off, all of it. Then he went and he even killed both my dogs within two weeks of each other. I mean, he was all over me. All over me. And that's when I was like, God, why is this happening? You've already annulled death. You've abolished it. You brought its power to naught and to no effect. What is going on? I need to know. So now I'm going to tell you what I found out so that you can break death off of yourself too. Number one is the pattern. Everybody say the pattern. What is the pattern? The pattern is this, and I take these examples from the book of Job, and I touched lightly on it last night. The pattern is this. The enemy creates storms. How many of you know the devil's a storm maker? In the book of Job, the devil stirred up all these storms in the natural against Job. He stirred up the enemies to come and to kill all his servants and then steal all his flocks and herds. Then the devil created the storm of an actual whirlwind that came and hit the house where all of Job's children were and knocked that house down, killed them all. Then the enemy stirred up a storm of even uh, hitting his body with those painful boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He even made his wife get cocky and mouth off to him. Oops, sorry. On the street still. <laughs> okay. But you see that? The enemy creates storms. What do you think we've been through for the last two years? Don't even think that Satan wasn't behind that. Satan, the spirit of death, created a massive worldwide storm. And he got a lot of people involved in it to help him. He creates storms for what purpose? To traumatize you. Layers of trauma. Not just one trauma, but another one, then another one. Then, you know, your kids die. Your body gets sick. Your best friend passes away. Then your mom gets ill. You got to watch her. You got to watch her for years. Nobody wants to help you. You run out of money. Then your business closes. Then, you know, your church you can't even go to church and get any help because your church closes. The enemy creates storms to get you wounded through trauma. Layers and layers and layers and layers of storms. Because he figures you could probably, you know, we're, we're believers. We have tenacity. We go after it. So we'll get healed of the first one and the second one. By the time he hits you, like, by the third, fourth, fifth, sixth one, you're like, okay, I'm done. And that's what happened to Job. See, what happened to Job is he got so traumatized by all the storms that he got bitter, and then out of his bitterness, he started to agree with the spirit of death. Now, so chapter 1 is chapter 2 is the trauma. Chapter 3, if you go read chapter 3 of Job, the entire chapter is Job saying, and, this is what, and he even confesses it himself right here in verse 20, why is light of life given to him whose misery and life to the bitter in soul? Right there he's saying, all that trauma, I let it get me bitter. 
And now, guess what I'm doing? I'm agreeing with death. So he says stuff like this. After this, meaning all the trauma that he went through, Job opened his mouth and cursed. He even cursed his birthday. He said, let that day perish when I was born, the night which would have announced there is a man-child conceived. Yes, let that night be solitary and barren. Let no joyful voice come out to it, because it did not shut the doors of my mother's womb. It did not, it, it did not uh, stop her breast from feeding me. One why wasn't I stillborn? Why did I not give up the ghost? Then he even goes so far to say this. He says, I long and wait for death, but it comes not. I dig for death more than hidden treasure. I rejoice exceedingly and am elated when I find the grave. See what this is. Everybody see the pattern. Say the pattern. Say the pattern. Look, the devil has put you in a pattern. And you have allowed him to do it and come into agreement with it. You've gone through wave after wave after wave after wave after wave of trauma that the enemy made with all the storms he hit you with. And you've let that trauma get you bitter. Man, if I can't take one more thing, I swear to God. That's it. I'm done. If that person says one thing to me today, I'll knock them out. I swear I will. Well, at least that's what I would say, but you guys might not. But, you know, I'm done. I'm quitting that job. You know, you let the trauma, 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 make you get into the drama of the trauma and get bitter. And then pretty soon out of that bitterness, I'm done. I'm finished. I don't want to live no more. I just want to go be in heaven with the Lord. If the Lord takes me right now, that, that's fine with me because I'm finished with this, with this world, this piece of dirt planet. How many of you, I want you to be honest, have let yourself get into the pattern? Come on. I want to see the hands. Come on. Hi. I want to see the hands. Hi. See that? The devil is, that's why he does this. He don't even need to do anything else but create the storm to begin with. And then our own souls... And our own, you know, not understanding how this thing works lets us fall into this pattern. And then, of course, when you agree with death, guess what happens? Everything starts dying. Hair, feet, legs, joints, body, uh, finances, kids, family, friends, business, ministry, you name it. Because you already, you've agreed with death. You've given him permission. You've said, come on in, get it. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Okay, so this is the first thing we're going to break tonight. I want to say something. Last night when I prayed for people, personally prayed for them, the angel was giving me words of knowledge about the trauma that they've been through. And I would say, did this happen? They go, yeah. And I said, did you get hurt or bitter or upset about it? Yeah. Have you wished you could die? Yeah. So many people had fallen into the pattern. Now, here's the deal. When I walk out of here tonight, do not come up to me and say, please pray for me, Kate. And then I sit there and I go, the Lord says that you've been having a war with your sister. Yeah. And you've gotten bitter about it. Yeah. Why do I, why, why? You should be getting those words of knowledge. Don't, don't, don't rely on me. What about if you don't catch me? What about I get slippery and just run on out of here? Which I rarely do. But maybe tonight I will. Just to make you guys diagnose yourself through the revelation that the Holy Spirit's going to give you. I shouldn't have to tell you you've been having a fight with your sister. I shouldn't have to tell you that you're still mad at an aunt who talked smack about you 10 years ago. You should know that. Even without the ghost. You should know that. Are you listening to me? I'm lightly spanking you because nobody seems to really take it seriously when I'm preaching it, and then later on they want me to fix them. You can fix yourself right now in your seat. Holy Spirit is here to heal you right where you're sitting. 99% of all the miracles I see happen with people sitting in their seat, and I never touch them. Last night I had to touch everybody to get any kind of movement. I'm not dissing you. I'm just being real. Okay? So right now I'm going to release the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is our first activation. Then we're going back into teaching. 
Okay, I'm going to release the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I want you with all your heart to say, Holy Spirit, show me every storm in my life that traumatized me. And then Holy Spirit, show me if I let myself get bitter, resentful, offended, hold, un hold unforgiveness or anything in my heart. And then start repenting. And we're going to get healed. And we're going to break our agreement of our words that we said I just want to die. I'm done. I'm through. It's over. Take me to see Jesus. Because guess what? We've been given an assignment here. Psalms 8. We've been given power over dominion over all the works of his hands. We're not doing that. Instead, we're just getting traumatized, bitter, and take me to heaven. <clears throat> Wrong. Okay, are you with me? Okay, so let's, let's, let's start praying in the spirit. Come on, start praying in the spirit. I release the Holy Spirit right now to remind you of everything, every storm, every trauma that has wounded you that you're still holding on to. You, you, you think about it. You talk about it. You, if somebody mentions something close to it, it triggers you. You, 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 you. And there's people involved, and you have not forgiven them. You've held on to offense, or bit, and you become bitter about it. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now to sweep through this place touch everyone in here and bring up the memories the things the crises that have wounded them that they're still holding on to in Jesus name keep on praying in the spirit How many of you already have it in your mind now that the Holy Spirit put it in your mind or your heart about that event? Raise up your hand. Let me see. Okay, how many don't yet? Raise up your hand. Only a couple people. Okay, that's good. All right, it's going to come to you now. Okay, so now I want you to start praying with me. I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for me. And your act and sacrifice was so powerful that you stripped death of his power and brought him to naught and to no effect. From this point on, I will never put up with any signs of death, disease, or aging in my life. And right now, I'm positioning myself to break free from the pattern. Lord, we know the enemy has made storms in our lives. 
even worldwide storms, all in an attempt to traumatize us. So now I come before you and I lay every trauma that I've ever been through at your feet. I cast the cares of those traumas upon you, Jesus, the details, the things I lost, the ways I was cheated, the ways I was abused, the ways I was, I was not appreciated, the ways I was beat up mentally, physically, emotionally, the ways I was robbed. I cast those cares on you so that you can recompense me and you can handle it. Lord God, I ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you come into my soul and you heal me of the pain, the grieving, the anger, the bitterness, and all the effects, the rejection, the abandonment, the fear, the depression that those traumas put upon my soul. Holy Spirit, I invite you in. I invite you into my mind to heal my mind of all the memories of those traumas that I'm still dwelling on. Lord Jesus, have your spirit cleanse my mind. And Lord, have your spirit invade my will so I'm not making choices that are results of the pain of my trauma. And Holy Spirit, flood my emotions with your presence and your power so all negative emotions that have come as a result of all the storms and all the trauma will be healed right now in Jesus' name. Now I want you to stop right there. Now I want you to think about the people that were involved in those traumas. Do you still harbor unforgiveness? Have you gotten bitter about them? Do you talk about them in a negative way? Yes, they probably did some horrible things to you. But it doesn't matter what they did. What matters is how we respond. Don't you think God's going to handle them? He is. So right now, in your heart, no matter what they've done, I want you to forgive them. And I want you to repent for becoming bitter, offended, judgmental, and critical. Because all those sins are allowing a legal landing strip for the enemy to make your body sick, rob your finances, break apart your marriages and your relationships, and hurt you in any way that you could possibly think. We're going to close the door right now. <clears throat> pray with me, and then we're going to pray in the Spirit. Say, Lord God, people have done some terrible things to me. But no matter what they've done, the most important thing is that I keep my heart clean. The Bible says we're supposed to forgive. Not seven times, but 77. The perfect number to just keep on forgiving. I forgive everyone that's ever hurt me. Now in your heart, say their names.
Now say, God, forgive me for being bitter, offended, critical, judgmental, angry, resentful for talking about them and for not letting it go. Wash me clean in your blood right now. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to say this. I break my agreement with death. I repent for every single word I've ever said about wanting to quit, wanting it to end, wanting to just go be with Jesus, wanting to die, wanting to give up. I repent with, for all those words. I break my agreement. I divorce my covenant with death. And I enter into a new covenant with the spirit of life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you always quicken me to guard my words and never say things like, I'm just getting old. but to always say things that pertain to life. In Jesus' name. Now say amen and give God a big praise. Amen. Now put it to your hands. I break trauma off of you now. I command it come off of you now. I say now. I say now. I say now. I say now, I say you go out, trauma, out, 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 out. Now everybody shout really loud for like 30 seconds, go. the effects of death right now. Life upon your thoughts, life upon your body, life upon your household, life to your family, life to your relationships, life to every part of your life. Right now, a flowing of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I release the truth that Jesus has brought death to naught and to no effect. And now we live under the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit, the life-giving spirit. That's who we are governed by, the life-giving spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's getting their heart healed because my, my, my heart is warm now. And, you know, we're going to do this again tomorrow morning because not everybody's going to get it right now. But a lot of people are. You're getting it right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what? Pray for each other real. Before we go to the next part, I just want you to, to lean over and pray for each other and start just saying positive affirmations to the person next to you. You are full of life. The Lord loves you. You got this. God's destiny is for you. Come on. I want you to turn to each other and support each other right now. Come on. Speak life over that person. Speak life over their finances. Speak life over their, their relationships. Speak life over their household and their kids. Speak life over their bodies. Speak life over them. Tell them, tell them, death has no rain on you, and I release life on you. I release life into every place you need it. I release life. 
on your hair, your skin, your organs, your bones. I release life. Come on, start to release life to them. And affirm them. Fill them with life with your decrees. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, you ready? Now let's go into the second part. Remember I told you there's two main things, two main things that allow death, that allow death to have his uh, legal right to afflict us and the entire planet. Number one was the pattern. Everybody say, I will never let the pattern happen ever again. You heard what you said, right? recognize when a storm is traumatizing you and you're getting bitter about it and stop yourself repent and ask the Holy Spirit to heal you of that trauma don't keep dwelling on it stop catch it catch the wave and ride it into the beach all right okay number two breaking the law look we're lawbreakers but Christ has come to fulfill the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf. What we don't realize is the devil has used our law breaking as a loophole to put death on our bodily organs. Let me show you proof. Romans 7, 5, Kevin. Romans 7, 5. I'm going to start reading it, and then we'll look at it. It says, when we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused up by what the law makes sin... We're constantly operating in our bodily organs so that we bore fruit for death. Did you see that? When we break the law, sin begins to constantly operate where? In, uh, say it with me, in our bodily organs to bear fruit for death. You see that? When you sin, you are allowing death to what? Attack your bodily organs. We have 76 bodily organs. Our skin is called an organ by doctors. It's the biggest organ in our body, and you wonder why everything's starting to drop. <laughs> because death is, what does it say? constantly operating, constantly operating, constantly operating in our bodily organs to produce fruit for death when we break the law. Satan's been using this as a loophole. You know why? Because James 2.10 says, no one can keep the whole law. It's impossible. If you break one part, you've broken it all. So what do we do? Because we, it's impossible. It's impossible for anyone in this room to keep the law. Impossible. You're going to break it. You might go a couple days and hold fast, but then, man, in your thoughts, whatever, your words, whatever, you're rolling your eyes at your hubs, whatever it is, you're, you're going to be breaking the law. And believe me, my hubs thinks that's breaking the law for sure. Okay. No one can keep the whole law except for one person, Jesus Christ. Let's go to that scripture. I love that one very much. Uh, Romans 8, 1 through 4, Kevin. I'll start reading it. Therefore, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of what? Sin and death. For God is done with the law, weakened by the flesh, meaning our flesh could never keep the law, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemns sin in the flesh for what reason? In order that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us. Jesus fulfilled the law on our behalf. He did something our weak flesh could never, ever, ever, ever do. That's why we need Christ. So whenever you, oh gosh. Do you understand Jesus lived a perfect life here on earth? He never sinned once. And he was in a human body. He did that for a reason. So that he could become the perfect atoning sacrifice for the rest of us in these human bodies. And go to the cross and lived a perfect life, never breaking the law, so he could become the perfect sacrifice to fulfill the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf. Something we could never do. So if you say, you, you got to use these scriptures as a weapon, a weapon, a weapon against death. You see sickness, disease, aging. You see your bones crippling, you're hopping along, whatever. You go right in the devil's face. You say, look, buddy, I know what you're doing. I know you're accusing me of breaking the law so you can cause death to produce fruit for death in my bodily organs. But guess what? Jesus fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf, something I could never do. So take that, stupid. Use it like a weapon. Use the truth of Christ and what he has done for you as a weapon against death. And you have to raise up. We have to take what's already been done. We have to decree it. We have to understand it and believe it. Are you with me? You know, all these curses, all these curses that these witches, this is Witchcraft Central. I found that out. Cursing, 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 cursing. You know one of the main things that, that witches put on you for cursing? Death. I'm not going to get on to, into the whole dynamics of this, but trust me, I know this by not only scripture, but by, but by revelation and by me seeing it happen all the time. Witches put death on you because that's their way. They sap the life out of you. We're rivers of living water flowing continuously from our innermost being. So how come we're getting older and older if we have rivers of living water flowing for, from, continuously from our, other, our inner being? Because we're being siphoned off like gas. When a witch curses you, they're able to actually steal your life force. You're all looking at me like, oh, now you went too far. <laughs> Look, I, I, when I was on the street doing my, you know, collecting and making dope, selling dope and all that, I never ran out of gas. Everywhere I went, I had a gas can and a hose. Nobody could siphon gas like Kate. I'd go into a parking lot and everybody would be drained, but I'd pull out with a full tank. I never paid for gas. I never ran out of gas because I know how to siphon gas. Then witches know how to siphon your life force off of you. But, and they curse you by doing it. But Christ, Galatians 3.13, Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse, the doom of what? Of the law. We've been free from the curse of the law. So whenever them witches or anything else tries to come curse you and put death on you, you can say, I have already been freed from the curse, not by my ability to keep the law, but because Jesus fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf, and now I'm free from the doom of the curse of the law and its condemnation. You've got to start using the scriptures like a weapon to beat the enemy over the head. You've got to give him a straight-up beat down, man. Like a blanket party in the shower in prison. Boom, 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 boom. If you don't know what that is, I'm sorry. <laughs> and look, you also, we also need to repent when we break the law. People, that repentance isn't very, very, very attractive right now. Repentance is not, people don't, you know, they say we don't need to repent. I disagree. Look, just in the natural, if I screw up and hurt my hubs, then I need to, I say I'm sorry. I say, I repent to you, honey. I'm so sorry. And I expect him to do the same to me. How much more a holy God? 1 John 1, 9. I don't know if we have that, Kevin. 
can you like make that happen like super fast? And I will go to it and read it to you. And I'll show you why. This is super important. 1 John 1 9. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. I love that edition. It says this. If we freely admit we have sinned. What's that? That's repentance, right? And confess our sins. What's that? That's repentance. He is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promise, and will forgive our sin. And then this is what it says in the Amplified. He will forgive our sin and dismiss our lawlessness. It's the breaking of the law that's the issue in the first place. When you break the law, death gets its right to produce fruit for death in your bodily organs. But when we confess, freely admit and confess our sins, what will he do? Forgive us and dismiss our lawlessness. That's why when, as soon as you blow it, so, oh, Jesus, oh, I repent. Boom. You cut that thing off right there. You cut it off. You cut it off. You cut off death's effect to produce fruit in your bodily organs through your repentance. Because, you're dis, because your lawlessness gets dismissed. Don't let anybody tell you to stop repenting and you don't need to repent anymore. It's ridiculous. Look, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it when I blow it, man. I'm like, something happens. And then I'm like, all of a sudden my body will start hurting. I'll feel like, oh, my neck, my back, my back of my neck. Whoa, what happened? It's because I just sinned and death is just waiting right there to pounce on me. I can feel its effects on my body. And I go, whoa, whoa, catch it. Whoa, caught it. Caught the wave right there. Whoa. Ah, Lord, God, wash me of that. Mm, oh, boy. Take that out of my heart. I'm so sorry. I, I freely admit and confess my sin. Dismiss my lawlessness. And, ri and right away, the pain recedes. Right away. Did you hear what I said? There it is right there. Dismiss our lawlessness. Okay? So we need to repent. Don't let, it, don't let anybody tell you it's out of fashion. Number two, we also need to have grace. Here's the deal. People are going, there's one side, the really religious side, saying we don't need any grace. We just need to repent. And then there's this side that says, all we need is grace. And we don't need to repent. We need both. We need both. We need a balance of both. You know what grace is? People don't understand this. Grace is a power that actually imparts to you everything Jesus won on the cross. Right? It's by grace through faith that we are saved. So God gives you this gift of faith. You believe in Jesus Christ. Boom. Grace is released. You say, you're my Lord and Savior. I love you. You know, grace is released. And what does that grace do? It gets you saved. And saved isn't just born again. Saved also means delivered, healed, protected, defended. It means a lot of things. So by grace through faith, you are saved. So through your faith in Jesus Christ, grace is released to give you everything that comes with your salvation. You know what that also includes? The fact that he stripped death's power and brought it to naught and to no effect. The fact that he broke the curse of the law of sin and the doom and condemnation of it. The fact that he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on your behalf. Grace actually imparts all those truths to you. When you partake of grace... You're partaking of the fact that, yes, he already stripped death. You're partaking of the fact that, yes, he already fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law. So the devil got to let you go and stop putting death on you. Do you understand that? Grace imparts to you all the truths that are in the scripture and the authority and the power behind them. Do you guys understand what I'm saying to you? And grace comes directly against the law. Let's read it. Kevin. Romans 3, 20 and 24. I'll start to read it. For no person will be justified, made righteous, and acquitted and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. All are justified and made upright and right standing with God freely and graciously by his grace. I want you to look at that. What does that mean? Look. By trying to live perfect, you'll never be able to be justified, made righteous and acquitted, and judge acceptable in his sight. You know what acquitted means, right? Acquitted from the accusations of your law breaking. Why? Because you, James 2.10, you can never keep the whole law. So no matter how hard you try, 
no matter how hard you try, try to observe the works prescribed by the law, you will never be able to be justified, made righteous and acquitted and judged acceptable. But you are justified and made upright and right standing with God. How? Freely and graciously by his grace. You're not made right by the, keeping the law. You're made right by grace. Does that mean you don't try to behave and obey God's commandments? No. What that means is it's impossible for you to obey all the commandments and all the law. Your flesh cannot do it. And that's why you need grace, because you can't keep the law. Only Jesus Christ could keep it, and he kept it for us, and that's why we need him. You did a tiny bit there. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand? That doesn't mean you don't repent when you blow it, because you do, because that's how your lawlessness gets dismissed. But you also have to start leaning into grace, because you have to go, my flesh is weak, and I can never keep the whole law. The devil knows that, so he's always going to try to put death on my bodily organs. But when I'm under grace, I'm justified. Made up right and right standing with God. Freely, meaning it's free. Sometimes I'll do that too. The devil will attack me. I'll be all like, ah! I'll get all wild up about something, and I feel death hitting my body, coming after my bodily organs. And right there I said, Ooh, devil, I caught you. You know what? You know, I repent for doing that. And guess what? Not only have I repented so that my losses is dismissed, devil, but guess what? I'm also under grace. And that's why I'm justified and made upright because that grace has imparted to me the truth of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me where he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf and he brought death's power to naught and to no effect. All that's been transferred to me, devil, because of grace, so beat it. Are you getting what I'm throwing down? Picking it up, what I'm throwing down. Romans 5.20. And then we're getting to a, close to another activation. I'll start reading it. But then the law came in to expand and increase the trespass, make it more apparent and exciting opposition. But where sin increased and abound, grace has surpassed it and increased the more and superabounded. You need to have this verse memorized and use it as a weapon. When you blow it, you repent, and then you say, guess what, devil? Where my sin has increased and abounded, God's grace has surpassed my sin, increased the more, and super abounded over my sin. So take your spirit of death and stick it where the sun don't shine. Did you hear what I said? Okay. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not on any longer exert dominion over you. Well, how does sin exert dominion over you? It controls you and all that other stuff. But it also, the wages of sin are what? Thank you. Death puts its dominion on you. But sin will no longer exert dominion over you since now you're not under the law as a slave but under grace as a subject of God's favor and mercy. What does that mean? The devil wants you to believe that you're a slave to a law you can never keep. Your flesh is too weak. Look, if your flesh could keep the law, then Jesus would never have had to die. It says in the scriptures that his death would be wholly superfluous. If you could keep the whole law, but we can't. That's why we need, need Christ. We need him. 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 You're under grace as a subject of God's favor and mercy. Amen. Now, okay, now we're going to move to the next part. Ready? Grace is the power that brings you restored youth. Let me prove it. Let's talk about Sarah and Abraham. Okay, like, wow. Sarah was hot. She got kidnapped once when she was 66 by one king, and then another time when she was in her 90s by another king. Okay, like, if two kings kidnap you when you're 60, 90, you got it going on. 
And she had Isaac when she was in her 90s. Now look at Abraham. He had it going on too. Even after Sarah died, he got remarried again. I think he was like a buck 40 or something like that. And he had six more kids at a buck 40. Okay, that's like, wow, you're studly, all right? Okay, but look, it wasn't always so for them. They weren't always like that. Romans 4, Paul says that, that Abraham was impotent and that Sarah's womb was deadened and barren. So what happened? How did they go from impotent and deadened and barren to extremely hot? Okay, how? The power of grace. Let me prove it to you. Romans 4, 16, Kevin. I owe Kevin dinner or something. His wife, him and his wife dinner or something. I got to take him out. Okay, ready? Look at this. This is beautiful. Therefore, inheriting the promise. What was the promise for Abraham and Sarah? The child, right? Isaac? Okay. But in order to have Isaac and inherit the promised child, they would have to have what? Restored youth. Their bodies would have to be restored from their dead in place. Right? Okay. So therefore, inheriting the promise of restored youth is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith <clears throat> in order that it, meaning the promise of restored youth, might be given as a what? Act of grace. Unmerited favor. To make it, meaning the promise of restored youth, stable, valid, and guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the devotees and adherents of the law. See, God right there told us how Abraham and Sarah got the promised child, got it, the promise of restored youth so they could have the baby by grace through faith. Not by being adherents to the law, because again, it's impossible to keep the whole law. Are you guys with me? I'm deep diving. Are you deep diving with me? Okay. Now look at this. <clears throat> Going to the book of Job. Do you have Job 30? Three, not 24, but the other one, Kevin. What do you got? Which verse, though? Okay, uh, I want um, 21. Do you have, is it 19 and 21? What do you got? Okay, so listen to this. This is a story in Job about a guy. That was way sick because he was being attacked by the spirit of death. And then I'll show you what God did for him. It says this. God's voice may be heard by a man when he's chasing with pain upon his bed. I want you, Kevin, to get ready. That, that um, Maryland spirit of death video. Okay. Pain upon his bed and with continual strife in his bones or while his bones are firmly set. So this guy's in pain on his bed. He's got strife in his bones. It says, so his desire makes him loathe food, and even dainty dishes nauseate him. He can't eat. It says, his flesh is so wasted away that it cannot be seen. I mean, he's sucked up. And his bones that were not seen stick out. His bones are sticking out. It says, yes, his soul draws near to corruption, and his life to the inflictors of death, the destroyers. So this guy's in this state, sucked up, big time, toe up from the floor up. Because of the inflictors of death. Okay? Sorry, a little street still there. Okay? A little street still there. Okay. What does, he, what does God do? God heals this guy. And I'll show you how he did it. Job 30, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Job 30, <laughs> 33, 24. Job 33, 24. Job 33, 24. This is what God did for this guy. He brought Skady Susan. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Then this is this. Then God is what? 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 Gracious to him and says, deliver him from going down to the pit of destruction. I have found a ransom. Who's that? A price of redemption. Who's that? An atonement. Who's that? Then the man's flesh shall be restored. It becomes fresher and more tender than a child's, and he returns to the days of his youth. How do you have your flesh become fresher than a child's, and you return to the days of your youth? 
by God's grace and through Jesus Christ, the ransom, the price of redemption, the atonement, who stripped the power of death, brought to not into no effect, who fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf, who broke the curse of the law of sin and death. You have your flesh restored and you return to the days of your youth through grace and Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said? Okay, we're going to do one more scripture and then we're going to activate. Whew, man, I love this stuff. Yes, oh, let's see a video. Thank you, Joan Hunter. You become such a media mogul. Let's play that. Um, look, Kevin, play that Maryland Spirit of Death and then play um, Terry Dead Bone. Back to back, please. You got the other one? Every day. 
She also had a metal rod disappear from her neck, just to let you know. It's on another video. I called her, talked to her, like, I don't know, a few months back. I said, what happened? She goes, I canceled the surgery. I don't need it anymore. Then Marilyn, first lady, she came the next day. <laughs> I was up on stage with Jessica Culianos, um, Patricia King, doing some Q&A and came down and this lady walks up to me all nice and glamorous looking and I looked at her and went, Marilyn? I didn't even recognize her. It had only been 24 hours. When I saw her, when she came up from behind me, tugged on me and I turned around and she, I go, how can I help you? She goes, I'm dying! And she was green and gray and greasy and she looked like she was going to die right at that moment. She was dying. Right? And then she said, I said, oh, my God, you look amazing. I said, how are you feeling? She goes, I got up this morning. I could get myself ready. I could do my hair, get my clothes on. She goes, I drove my whole family here. We had to park far away because we were late. She goes, I beat everybody walking across the parking lot. She goes, I got to the front door, and while I was waiting for them, I, the heavy front doors of this church, she took the front doors, and every time somebody came up, she opened it for them and went, look, I couldn't do this before. Look, I couldn't do this before. Look, I couldn't do this before. She goes, you didn't even notice, Kate, that while you were sitting up in the front row getting ready for the session during worship, I was dancing wildly almost right in front of you. I didn't even recognize her. Wildly dancing in the whole worship. She goes, I went to lunch. I ate everything on my plate. I was famished. Then I saw her like six months after that. Her husband was with her. They came up on stage with all their grandkids and all their kids and everybody else. Everybody's crying. The husband, they had both lost their spouses to death. Both of them. And they found each other, and he said, I thought I, was, I found my soulmate after my first wife died, and I thought I was going to lose her too. And he started bawling. He goes, I knew she was healed the moment she called. She called me, and she said, hello, darling. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to go into the court of heaven. Why the court of heaven? Because grace defeats death. Because where the sins increase of the law are breaking, grace increases even more. And there is in the, in the heavens many different courts. There's, there's a, just like there's divorce courts here and criminal courts and family courts and every all these other courts. Here's Supreme Court. There's different courts in heaven. And one of the courts in heaven is the grace court. And that is, uh, that is Hebrews 4.16. We come boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. Why is that a court? Because the word thrown there means a judge's bench. In that court, every decision is made based on God's grace. So that's where you go to face the accusations of our law breaking because the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Okay, now, we have the legal right to take death to court. And that story is in The Persistent Widow. You all know the story. Remember, she, she goes in front of this unrighteous judge over and over she's persistent over and over again and she goes avenge me of my adversary avenge me of my adversary avenge me of my adversary and he finally gives her you know he he gives her justice not because he was righteous but just because he was afraid she was going to beat him to death we have to be persistent in defeating death now so she's in that court and she's saying avenge me of my adversary what was her case guess what her case was against satan not a person and against the spirit of death. How do I know? Because she said, avenge me of my adversary. The word adversary, there's anti dekos It means one who brings a lawsuit, specifically Satan. Meaning Jesus is saying a parable that Satan is bringing lawsuits against you. And you are supposed to go into court and be persistent to face those charges and win a verdict. When you go into the grace court, you never lose. You never, you can't lose. It's impossible. Now, her case was against Satan, but also death. How do I know? She was a widow. 
a widow. Hello, look up the meaning of widow. It means one who's lost their spouse to death. Her case was against the spirit of death. That spirit had killed her husband, took her provisions, took her protection, took the love of her life, took her companionship, took her safety. That's why she was in there, avenge me of that adversary of death. Avenge me of that adversary of death. Avenge me of that adversary of death. He took my husband's life and now I'm a widow. You, that's New Testament. You have the legal right to take death to court. All right, so we're going to go into court right now. As we do, you, you have, you can never, you should never go into court without an offering. Psalm 96 says, give God the glory to his name. Bring your offering into his courts. You are always supposed to bring a sacrifice to God when you go into the courts because your seed in the court speaks. It actually testifies for you against the demonic powers, including death, that are attacking you. Sometimes if, if I am like at the end of my rope and I can't fast and pray even, I plant a seed because I know even if I'm too weak to fast, too weak to pray, too weak to war, too weak to do anything, that if I just plant a seed, I'm going to get results because that seed is going to be planted. And when you plant a seed of money, what's going to spring forth? Money, blessings, prosperity, victory. You're planting a seed in the court. And it's going to produce a harvest for whatever you plan it for. You can name that seed. I put this seed in to come against death. And that's what you're going to get, a harvest of life. I want you to bow your heads right now. And I want the worship team to come up. Please. Thank you. And I want right now the Holy Spirit. We're going to release the Holy Spirit. We're about to go into court and we're going to deal with death. We're going to file a case against him. And be the persistent widow to be avenged of our adversary of death who has killed our finances, our relationships, our marriages, our bodies, our, our, our ministries, our children. He's gone after every part of our life. And we're going to file that case right now. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak individually to every single person in this place. And that you tell them what is the sacrificial seed that they should plant in the court so that that seed will keep on speaking for them, testifying for them, and producing results, 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 as they plant that seed in the court, in, the, in that place of victory. So, Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to everybody right now, in Jesus' name, about what they should bring tonight as their sacrificial offering to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just get a little keys in the back while people are praying so that they can uh, hear from the Lord. And then we're going to put information up on the board, too, so you can know how to give. There's a lot of options. So go ahead and look up on the screen, and you can see all the different ways you can give. And if you want an envelope, raise your hand because somebody will come and bring it to you. I want you to fill it out, and I want you to hold on to it. And if you put it on your phone, that's fine. You're going to lift your phone up, and we're going to do it together as we go into the court we're going to lift up our offering together and then offer it unto the Lord as we're praying and believing for our case that our case will be filed in the court. Thank you, Jesus. Shit, I'm not 
I'm sowing my seed too. So this isn't just some hype. Because I am constantly sowing so that I can break death totally off. I'm believing that I'm going to get younger and younger. My flesh is going to become more and more fresher than a child's. Right now, we are going to get, we are getting younger. <clears throat> Put Psalm 90, uh, Kevin, 2, I think, up, and we're going to be part of that. It's going to be our decree in the court. Kevin. Oh, maybe people need that right now. <clears throat> Does everybody have that information or you still need it? Okay. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay, look at this scripture real quick. Ready? The uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, be long lived. How many of you want to be long lived? Amen. They'll be stately and upright. How many of you want to walk upright for the rest of your life, not bent over, not hobbling around, not on a cane or a walker or a wheelchair? How many of you want to be upright? Okay. You'll be upright. You'll be useful. How many of you want to be useful so that you can clean your own house, get ready yourself, do your own laundry? I know that we'd like everybody else to do it, but wouldn't you know, don't you want to know that you can physically do all that? Get your kids over for all the meals. You cook holiday meals. They come over to your house. How many of you want to be useful to the end of your days? Useful and fruitful. I still want to be fruitful. Even though I'm, I'm almost six years old, I don't want to have any babies. Well, actually, I would if, if God told me. But I want my body to be fruitful. Amen? How many of you want to still have your body be fruitful? Right? You'll be long lived, stately, upright, useful, fruitful. You'll grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic, stable. How many of you want to be so stable in your health that you never have any health crises? You'll be durable. How many of you want to be able to fall, take a fall and you're not going to break a hip or a knee or a wrist? How many of you want to be durable? Okay? You'll be durable and incorruptible. How many of you want your cells to be so incorruptible that no COVID, no Omicron, no pandemic, no nothing can touch your cells because you're incorruptible? You can have all those things. And then the scripture tells you how. Ready? Are you ready? You ready? It happens when you're what? Planted in the house of the Lord, you shall flourish in the courts of our God, growing in grace. You shall be bring forth fruit in old age. That's telling you how to get it. Flourish in the court, growing grace. Flourish in the court, growing grace. Flourish in the court. Growing grace, flourish in the court, growing grace. How many of you have your offering ready? Let's stand up before the Lord. We're going to get ready to sing in a minute. Okay, great. <clears throat> now, is it your phone or your envelope or whatever you have? Hold it up. Say, Lord God, I come boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in my time of need. I know this court is the place where I can face death, defeat his accusations, and win a verdict of life. So in Jesus' name, I step in right now, boldly, I have the right. And I face every accusation of my law breaking and my ancestors' law breaking. Lord God, I confess my sin freely, and I know that as I repent for breaking your laws and being in sin, that you will forgive me and dismiss my lawlessness. I thank you, Lord, that because of the blood of Jesus Christ and because of his grace, these charges that death is using to produce fruit on my bodily organs and the rest of my life will have to be dismissed. I stand here firmly under the blood of Jesus because I overcome the enemy 
by the blood of the lamb and my testimony in this court. <clears throat> so I testify that grace in this court brings me all the things Jesus won for me at the cross where he broke the curse of the law of sin and death off of my life where he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf something I could never do where he stripped death of its power and brought death's power to naught and to no effect these are my testimonies to be recorded in the records of this court as to the reason why death can no longer affect me because Jesus has abolished death annul, annul death destroyed death eradicated death and given me life and immortality I stand here justified made upright and in right standing with God not by my ability to keep the law because that's impossible but by grace free unmerited undeserved grace I have it and it breaks the power of the law because where my sin increased and abounded grace increased the more and super abounded over it grace I stand firmly in it and it defeats the law and I thank you Lord that now I stand here as the persistent widow who lost her husband to death and I file a, court, a case in this court to not only receive an innocent, not guilty verdict on all the charges death brought against me, but for death to have to let go of every part of my life. Now put your hand on your head and say, so death has to let go of my hair, my eyes, my ears, my sinuses, my mouth, my teeth, my jaw, my neck, my throat, my esophagus, my larynx, my heart, my lungs, my gallbladder, my kidneys, my liver, my intestines, my reproductive organs, all my joints, all my bones, all my muscles, all my tendons, my entire skeleton, I decree death has to let go of all my cells in my body, of my lymphatic system, of my digestive system, of my reproductive system, of my circulatory system, my respiratory system, and every system in my body. Death, you have to come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. Now turn to your neighbor and start rebuking death off of any place that they need it. Go, turn to your neighbor and start rebuking death off their hair, their organs, their liver. Where do they need it? Ask them, where do you need death to come out? Come out, come out, come out. Come on, ask them and start rebuking death. Command it to come out. I stand in agreement here with you right now in this court that death is being judged on your behalf that the, this court is judging the spirit of death foreseeing that death to come out of every one of your bodily organs to stop bearing fruit for death I decree it right now in the name of Jesus death you have to stop bearing fruit stop bearing fruit stop bearing fruit right now in Jesus name 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 now wave your offering and say Lord this is my seed I plan it for a harvest of life I decree death is being broken off my finances my family my friends my spouse my household 
my business, my church, my ministry, my savings accounts, every part of my life, death is being judged, 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 judged. I'm being avenged of my adversary. Say it, I'm being avenged of my adversary. Death is going down. Now come and plant your seed as you shout to God. Come on. Have them come up. No, I want them to come up. I want them, everybody, to come up and put it in. And come up to the front, and I want us to sing. So come up and plant your seed, and come up here to the altar, and we're going to sing. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, I'm going to pray over everything. Right now, death, you be destroyed. I command death. These seeds are being planted for a harvest of life. I decree it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak against death, and I judge that spirit right now in this holy court right now. And I release life as every seed goes in to the court of heaven right now and is being planted. I decree miracles, miracles over their body, miracles over their finances, miracles over their family, miracles over their marriage, miracles over their organs, miracles over every system in their body. I decree it right now in the name of Jesus I say death you have to come out now you're being removed by this court you have been judged by this court life is coming right now and every seed will produce a harvest every seed will produce a harvest I decree it I decree it right now every seed producing a harvest in the name of Jesus now let's sing to the Lord and then we're gonna release life okay come on so they can Mighty, I want to hear you sing. Come on, oh, oh, oh holy, oh, 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 oh holy, oh, 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 oh holy, Lord God Almighty. I don't hear you. Everyone in the temple. 
temple cries, oh, speed it up a little. Everyone in the temple cries, holy, 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 holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Come here, here. Holy, holy, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Everyone in the temple cries, holy. Holy. Now turn towards your neighbor. Now I want you to start releasing the spirit of life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. He's the giver of life. I want you to start releasing the Holy Spirit into their mind, into their organs, into their scalp, their, their eyes, their ears, their, their lungs, their heart, their liver, their bones, their joints. Come on. Start. We release you, Holy Spirit. We release you, Spirit of life. We release you to flood everybody in this place. We release you, Holy Spirit, to correct, to drive out the effect effects of death and to correct to correct the body to heal the body to quicken the mortal body command him to quicken their mortal body command the Holy Spirit to quicken their mortal body to quicken their bones to quicken their joints to quicken every part of them to quicken every organ command that spirit of life flood them rivers rivers of living water flowing forth from your innermost being rivers of living water <clears throat> Going to the place where you need it right now. Going to the place where you need it right now. Frequencies of life. Frequencies of life. Frequencies of life right now. Frequencies of life right now. Rivers. Rivers of living water. I decree it over you right now. I decree it over you right now. The matchless power of Jesus Christ. Matchless power of the Lord. Matchless power. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, speak that life, release that power, command that power of the living spirit to destroy and to correct and to heal everything that death has done to your body. In the name of Jesus, 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 right now, right now, right now, right now, right now right now right now in Jesus name right now right now in the name of Jesus 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 right now rubber shake it about 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 rubber shake it about
Jackson. Look, guys, this is the book about what I just taught. Be revived. Go get it. It's got activations at the end of every chapter. Be revived. Be revived. Okay, and I'll give that away to my partner.